Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium, and today it's a good old-fashioned all-Brockton game, the Cardinals, Spellman Cardinals, and your Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the turf here at Brockton High. The Cardinals come in at 5'11 and 1. And the Cardinals defeating Brockton in their earlier matchup this season at Spelman. Brockton coming in with three wins. Come on, Lena. Come on, Lena. They stand at three and four, uh, three, 13 and one for the Lady Boxers. Clinching a playoff berth regardless of that as this cross is going to find its way all the way out to the corner, kept in by Spellman. Brockton, a draw against Durfee, 0-0 this past Tuesday night to clinch a share of the Big Three championship. Both Durfee and Brockton are in the playoffs. We have a free kick just outside the box for Spellman. Directly on net and picked out of thin air by Tori Viola Lathery. So it's the Cardinals that have done some damage in Division Three and now on a run here. A shot is going to go wide. Lothry sending this one back out towards midfield. It's the freshman Lena Marion. Now Kayla Murphy fighting against two Cardinals. Spellman wearing their away maroon jerseys, gold and white trim for the Cardinals. Brockton in their home whites, red and black trim. Tournament seedings for MIAA soccer come out the morning of November 1st. Check our Twitter feed at Brockton Channel for the boxers, both boys and girls, first round matchups. The girls will have a preliminary game, and now a shot is going to be. Knocked off of a boxer defender. It's number 27. Got number 23, rather, Lara Cardozo back deep for Brockton. And this will result in another goal kick. Now it's Vanessa Dos, but not Vanessa Dos Anjos. A little bit of number switchery for the boxers. That was Stephanie Alves up front starting for the first time this year.
couple of JV call-ups for the last game of the season. Mariah Andrade, Melanie Tavares, and Jaylena Davis. Surprising situation is the freshman who's had a solid year for the Brockton Boxers, Vanessa Dos Anjos. No longer on the Brockton roster. Six minutes into the first half. Still scoreless between the Cardinals and the Boxers. Head coach of the Cardinals, Mike Perry. They talk about multi-sport athletes all the time. How about Mike Perry coaches three varsity teams at Cardinal Spellman. Girls soccer, men's basketball, and track and field. All headed up by Coach Perry. Fairly young team for the Cardinals. Twelve seniors, but I count only four or five of them starting. Number of injuries for the Cardinals. Couldn't get the full list. This Coach Perry was afraid he was going to leave someone off. Out of play off of Spellman. That's Shaw. Just out of reach of Marion. Busy couple of days for BCA Sports. Of course, last night we traveled Metro West for the football team's first round loss against the Needham Rockets. Overtime loss. It all came down to a missed extra point with about a minute 20 seconds left in regulation. Able to get back in time for back-to-back -back Saturday action. Cardinal Spellman and the Brockton Lady Boxers. And later on this afternoon, it is the undefeated boys soccer team. Big three champions going up against the Norwell Clippers. And we're being told that Norwell is undefeated in Division Two. They're one of those programs, even though they're D2, they can compete with the heavyweights in Division One. Always a good matchup for the boxers. Spellman throwing number 17. Going to take the kick, or the throw rather. Mary Kate Toscano.
special guest in the house for what has turned into a beautiful morning here at Marciano Stadium. Former head coach Andrea Tassinari and her daughter Olivia. Of course, Olivia getting the good news, her battle with cancer in remission. Spellman had a corner kick and now Toscano is going to throw it back inbounds. A couple of more substitutions. Lula Kelly and Jamie Serrato coming into the game for Spellman. Jayla Smith knocking this one out of bounds. The sophomore Alicia Tokman getting ready to come in for Brockton. Tokman, especially for a sophomore, has had a very good season at boxers uh, for the boxers up front. Another corner kick for Spellman. This one directly in to the awaiting arms of Tori Villa Lothry. Marion's run out of bounds and tripped up, sliding into the Spellman bench. Take a look at the replay of Marion getting tripped up after she went out of bounds. Taking out a member of the Cardinals on the bench. 15 Felix is calling for a flag of 15 yard on sportsmanlike conduct penalty. A few of those last night in Needham. It's going to be another corner for the Cardinals. It is again a beautiful day for soccer as the sun's starting to peek through the clouds. 61 degrees. Winds directly to the south. With gusts of about 9 miles an hour. 75% humidity. A 53 degree dew point. Fairly moist air. As Marion keeps it in. Marion still with it, now sending it up looking for Kayla Murphy, who has become the de facto leader of this boxers team. This is the team that's. Missing their 30 goal score more than ever. Gabby Del Pico, of course. Unable to play for Brockton High this year. As, as a sophomore, she committed to Harvard. Oh, 
And this one's going to be a dangerous play against Brockton. Free kick for Brockton. Madison Hendrigan going to take it. Hendrigan to Murphy, and it's headed out of play. I think that one might have been ruled off sides if it had gone into the net. It's Yeah, it's off sides right there. So no harm, no foul. It'll be a goal kick either way for Spellman. Very bright out here. Spellman looking into the sun. Spellman coming away with it. Brockton, Stephanie Alves knocking it. Up into, straight up into the air. This one going to find its way into the Brockton bench. Now to Lena Marion, who's in the middle of the field. And she creates a, or gives it off. To the Cardinals. About 21 and a half to go in the first half. Still scoreless between the Cardinals and the Boxers. Brockton going for the quick restart. Instead, a couple of substitutions. Melanie Tavares and Kyla Colors into the game for Brockton. Tavares, one of those JV call-ups as Brockton struggling to deal with the loss of Vanessa Dos Anjos. Sun has gone back into hiding behind the clouds. That's his colors. Called for a handball.
Very back and forth affair. No team with a decent offensive opportunity yet. Platoon substitutions for the Cardinals. Seventeen minutes and some change left in the first half. A back and forth affair. Between the two teams from Brockton. Brockton's going to have their first corner kick of the morning. Murphy with the low kick, and it finds its way through the traffic out the other side. Good attempt by Murphy. Just found its way through a couple of boxers and Cardinals on the far side. Now Murphy spinning with it. Danelle David stepping up. Spellman back the other way. We mentioned it's been an interesting few days for BCA Sports. Jayla Smith deflecting this one out of bounds. And it's the undefeated boys soccer team Later on against Norwell. Putting their record on the line. Norwell coming in at 13, one and three. One of the better division two teams you'll see. Now it's Lennon Marion with an opportunity. It's up and it's saved by Spellman's goalkeeper. Good stop there for Laura Sexton. Smith popping this one up. Spellman back the other way. Mathelier trying to get it up to Marion, and this one's going to find its way out of bounds. Yeah. 
Now a shot is going to be easily stopped by Sexton. One of the high notes this season for Brockton has been their senior goalkeeper, Tori Viola Lothry, who has been a rock in net all season long. Tori has been phenomenal all year. Carrying the boxers to the playoffs. Boxers three thirteen and one. And in the playoffs. Everybody's 0 0 in the playoffs. It's a clean slate. Of course, last year we were expecting not such a deep run. Went down to Plymouth South. Beautiful campus down there. Defeating the Panthers. Moving on, I think we played Durfee at Durfee in the second round. You're right, we went we went to Natick. Defeated by the Red Hawks, top seeded Red Hawks. And lost one nothing. Of course soccer is one of those magical sports. Sprockton has a free kick from about 30 yards out from net. Hendrigan sending this one into the box. It's headed and it's gonna go just wide. It's gonna be a goal kick for Spellman. Soccer, one of those magical sports. More on this Colin later. Where if you're eliminated from the playoffs, you're done. You do not continue play. Of course, the MIAA has this new radical idea that everybody needs a participation trophy and we can't hurt anyone's feelings. So in football, in football, if you lose in the playoffs, you continue playing. You enter the bridesmaids bracket, you enter the losers bracket. You've got X amounts of games that mean absolutely nothing. It's hard to motivate high school kids anyway. It's almost an impossible task to motivate them for a game that they know means absolutely nothing. So Brockton knocked out against Needham last night, enters that loser's bracket, will play God only knows where against God only knows who next week in a game that's just for stats. Right, and the P word was mentioned, pride. Pride. 
there's quite an easy fix for the MIAA's football debacle. It is really simple. It's so the way it's formatted now. It's a 10-game season and then Thanksgiving. The last three weeks of the regular season are the playoffs. So what you do is you shorten the season to eight games. You have an eight game regular season. After that is the three weeks of playoffs that would end the week before Thanksgiving. You make it through, you play on Thanksgiving. Which would still be a meaningless game because that's what the MIAA likes to do. And the Super Bowl would continue to be the first Saturday in December. At the old Sullivan Stadium down on Route 1 in Foxborough at Gillette. Now Jayla Smith is back defensively. She's pushed off the ball. A shot is going to go wide. Six and a half to go here in the first half. And we are still scoreless between the Cardinals and the Boxers. Classic East versus West battle. Spellman located on the east side on Court Street. It's Brockton High. Forest Ave, Belmont Street. Yeah, pick one. Oh, yes, yes. The good situation for the boxers is that there is no injuries. I say that with an asterisk because their senior captain, Jeanne Demanche Silva, done for the year with a broken collarbone. It's been a fairly common injury this year in sports. I feel like we're saying broken collarbone a lot more often than we have in recent years. Aaron Rodgers, quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, broken collarbone. Cardozo with a good defensive play, sending it to Hendrigan. Ticking down to four minutes left in the first half. Spellman with another opportunity. This shot is going to go wide and out of play. It'll be a throw in for Brockton. Kayla Murphy back in the game. She replaces Madison Hendrigan.
Leela Kelly back into the game for the Cardinals. Talkman on the far side, heading it out of play. Off the face. The face falls to the face. Of Kyla Colors. That's one way to get a shot on net. The clearing attempt for Spellman. Right off the face of Kyla Colors as we have two minutes to go in the first half. Official time kept on the field. Official time will be kept on the field. Kyla Colors is continually reaching up for her head as this shot easily stopped by Viola Lothry. That's Talkman who's knocked off the ball. For next week. Yes. It's a, yes, I think we have an 11 o'clock start time. Yeah. Oh. Final substitution. No, number it's, one, it's there. Yeah, so 11 o'clock next week. Smith turning his foot over to well, Sarah we have, Jope. We, have, we were going to do a freshman at Abington, and uh, our coaches, they, I need to cancel that, and I know that uh, he's not going to be happy, but he's got like half his team that's supposed to be in an eligible. So, so they are going to uh, focus this week on getting ready to do a study hall. He's going to get ready, so we're going to give him a bye week. So that's what we got going on. And offsides against Brockton. Probably about 30 seconds left here in the first half. Still scoreless between the Spellman Cardinals and the Brockton Boxers. Whistles blow and the first half has come to an end. All tied up, zero to zero. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize... You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels.
Gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome back into Armand Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium for second half action. Between the guys from the east, the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals, and the team from the west, the Brockton <coughs> High School yeah, uh, Boxers. We are scoreless coming into the second half. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action high above the turf here at Brockton High School. <laughs> Spellman coming in at 5, 11, and 1. Brockton at 3, 13, and 1. And with all of their three wins, they go charging into the tournament full steam ahead. Two goaltenders have been strong, haven't been tested often when they have Laura Sexton for Spellman and Tori Viola Lothry have both been strong for their respective teams. Kayla Murphy with a turn. Create an opportunity, but she can't catch up to the ball before Spellman's defense takes it. Back and forth first half. And still scoreless here between the Cardinals and the Boxers. Later on this afternoon we have the Brockton boys soccer team undefeated. 14-15-0-2. Going up against Norwell, 13, 1, and 3. For the Clippers, Division 2 powerhouse. It's them and Nauset. Very strong teams. It's Nauset was one of the only teams to beat New Bedford. Brockton on the short list as well. Brockton Still has a matchup with New Bedford on their slate. Game was supposed to be this past Thursday. It has been moved. Hurricane 
due to the strong winds on Thursday night. They will now play Monday night down in New Bedford. Six o'clock start for that one. Just joining us, we are still scoreless between Spellman and Brockton High. Interesting situation of the day. Vanessa Dos Anjos and Jayla Smith getting into a situation outside of school, we're being told. Outside of school that has led to the dismissal of Dos Anjos from the team. And other consequences for Smith. Now the shot and diving right, stop by Avail Lothry. Take a look at that stop for Viola Lothry. Excellent stop for the senior goalkeeper for Brockton. scoreless <laughs> now we have a boxer that's slow to get up that's Talkman now Daniel Davids fighting for defensive position Spellman with it that's number nine with a shot off the post and loose and another stop by Viola Lothry, and she dives on the loose trash. Tori Viola Lothry with the game saver for the boxers, getting enough to make it hit the post. Excellent awareness to get all the way back across the net. Play of the game right there for Tori Viola Lothry. The offensive opportunity was Elise Fitzgerald for Spellman.
Can take that one and send it to Sports Center. Viola Lothry, perhaps with a game saving stop. More substitutions for number 12, Molly Farrell, number 17, Mary Kate Toscano. The Spellman Cardinals. Now an opportunity for Spellman, Danelle Davids, and another diving stop for Viola Lothry. Might as well put a playlist together on the stops for a Viola Lothry. David's missing the attempt. And Viola Lothry saving it with her left knee. And a corner kick for the Cardinals. High kick across the box. Dangerous play. High kick called against Spellman. Twenty seven minutes left. Talkman in a foot race. That's Lena Marion on the far side. And her cross broken up by Spellman's defense. This one ping pongs to Hendrigan. Hendrigan's shot deflected away back towards midfield. Mathalia to Davids. Davids, the 50 yard. Pass looking for Marion up front, and it's instead taken by Sexton, the goalkeeper for the Cardinals. Now Davids has to get back. He's going to play it perfectly to Ralla Lothary. Still scoreless, but not for lack of effort. For Spellman. 
Couple of excellent stops for Tori Viola Lothry. Now it's Spellman in again. This shot off of Jayla Smith's shoulder. See, immediately reaching for that shoulder was Jayla Smith. You know, as the defensive stop. Out of bounds off of Spellman. Good work there by Smith. Just under 25 minutes to go now in the second half. Still scoreless. Long throw right into the boot of Smith as a couple of players hit the deck. We have an injured Cardinal. Way back at the 20-yard line of Brockton, it's number 11 who is in a lot of pain. Mary Wigley, and she's in a lot of pain. She is crying on the field. Interesting to see if we'll have a look at that. What happened back there at the 20? Unable to put any weight on the leg is Wiggly. It's right here. You're looking. Uh, she's got her ankle twisted. Right there. She got tangled up. Is that Kyla Colors? So Wigley still down. And trainer Jerry Connors working on the ankle of Mary Wigley. Clock stopped with 24-10 left in the second half. Injury timeout with 24-10 on the clock in the second half. And Wigley is going to be carted off the field. Good coach Mike Perry assisting as well. It is... The left leg of Wiggly that's the issue. Wiggly unable to put any weight on it. The ankle got twisted in a collision with one of the boxers forwards. Cardinal Spellman injury substitution number 13 Caroline Cook we are now joined special guests coach Taz <laughs> and Olivia coach Taz how's it going 
it's it's going good. Thank you. Thank you for um, asking me to come up and say hello. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So we've got Olivia here. First time we've met. <laughs> doing well still? She's, do well, apart from not having a soccer ball right now, she's doing great. She's doing great. Thank you. Everything has been, um, you know, her scans have been clear, and she's a crazy three-year-old, what I like to say. So she's doing well. So the backstory here, Olivia, a very brave battle with cancer, in remission. Excellent news. Yeah, it's you know it's been a blessing. I mean, you hold your breath when we got to go for those um, MRI scans, but um, oh, that's all you can ask is that they come back clear and you know you move on day by day. So it's been, she's a she's my miracle. She's my little fighter. <laughs> so, the so the roller coaster of emotions for you. Take us through the feeling. Doctors say Olivia's got cancer. <clears throat> I mean, going back to that moment, you you can't describe it. I mean, we were shocked, um, you know, panic, um, fear, anxiety. It's just a huge amount of emotion of you, you just don't know at that point of what's going to happen. What exactly can we expect? What's the unexpected? And, um, you know, and we didn't have any time to think about it because the next morning, so within seven hours of us finding this out, she's already in surgery, um, brain surgery, emergency. And, you know, you just hope that she has enough strength in her to get through it. And she did. So, so we had enough strength to get through it. And, um, you know, then the meeting with the chemo uh, about the chemo starts. And that's just like a whirlwind of information. I mean, I didn't retain 90% of it because it's just... I, I was still in shock that we were actually sitting in the meeting uh, talking about chemo and stem cell transplant and all the medicines and, um, you know, but the, the Jimmy Fund and our doctor were so supportive of us, so supportive of her um, and our family and friends. So um, what could have been even a, a worse situation, we always knew that we had that support and love, um, you know, for her. And, um, right? Yeah. Um, and she's been a trooper. You know, she got through the, the um, medication. It was tough. She had really tough days. And I was there predominantly at, in the hospital with her most of the time. Uh, and sometimes we were there for over three weeks at a time. Um, and there were days. There were days that were, that were tough. And I just kind of let her be. And then there were days that she was awesome. And I just kind of embraced them and hopefully you know, got her through those. So now we're out and it's been a year since we've been out, right? Because last October she was done with her um, isolation um, because of the stem cell and, right? Yeah, that was a year ago. So she's, um, it's great to say that she's been thriving. You know, she, um, we don't see any um, um, ramifications yet. I mean, I still walk on eggshells. Don't get me wrong, um, but as long as she's good, it's it's a blessing. It's it's um, it is. It's a blessing. So you get the whole support system, the entire Brockton High, uh, Brockton Public Schools family. Mm -hmm. You've got Dana Farber, the Jimmy Fund. Tell us about your support system. Uh, you know, we had um, uh, you know, a couple of um, fundraisers for her, um, in in honor of her, um, and. That in itself is amazing. You know, just text messages alone, letters alone, um, organizations that reached out to us that we didn't even know of. We had um, two um, pediatric brain foundations reach out to us. And, I mean, I didn't even know those existed. I mean, you're just so in the moment. You just don't expect that, obviously. And um, actually, this past weekend, I was able to... Um, run the Marine Corps Marathon in honor of one of the pediatric brain foundations that reached out to her. So to meet their family um, and actually face-to-face -face tell them, you reached out to me and our family. I am honored to do this for you and your organization and have your you know, logo on my back to run this marathon. Um, you know, just those stories as well of the people we've met and the roller coaster we've been on, there are extreme ups and downs, but... 
it, it's truly an amazing and it's very humbling. Um, you can never, I can never really truly put it into words because I'm in amazement of how much good there is around us, thankfully, uh, and how much good there is in the world. I mean, people just want to help. And we, again, it's, it's, we've been blessed, and I say to her every night, she's one lucky little lady. Uh, she has no idea yet. <laughs> she has no idea, but she, she's certainly going to know. Someday. Yeah, she's got great She'll people around someday. her. And um, to see her in school now and to see the teachers with her, it's right. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. So we're, we're very blessed. She's a very blessed little girl. So the end of the roller coaster, doctors tell you it's in remission. What are you, what's going through your mind at that moment? Well, you know what? We've never actually heard the R word. That's what I say, the R word. We've never actually heard that. We are just now, we had scans every three months where she gets an MRI in, um, of her brain and spine. And every three months we've been able to hear it shows no signs of infection, no signs of disease. And um, now since the last one in September, since that was clear, we're, we've graduated to now the four-month protocol which is now we go every four months for brain and spine um i think if that shows clear in a year we might hear the r word technically um but again we just go every every scan to every scan you know just four months to four months now right babes yeah yeah so almost back to normalcy yeah yeah I mean, there's nothing normal about raising a three-year-old <laughs> What's it like, you know, you you got the roller coaster of emotions. You never know what's going to come of this battle. Right. right. Oh, You're absolutely. You're raising a, now a healthy three-year-old. Yep. And, you know, someone had asked me. Someone had asked me, do you feel bad when you have to discipline her? And I say, no, absolutely not. She's a three-year-old. She needs to be quote normal she needs to go back to normalcy and we don't yell at her don't get me wrong we don't yell at her a lot but if we need to raise our, vo our voices and we need to tell her to do something i say no i don't i don't feel bad at all she's a three-year-old she's gonna have fits she's gonna you know she's gonna act you know the way she shouldn't sometimes and um just back to normal back and i love it because now you know thankfully her hair did grow back you don't see a scar you don't see a quote ball child so nobody knows now and everyone can treat her quote normal without any maybe I shouldn't say that or maybe we should do this it's 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 normal it's business as usual which is which is great which is something I like and if people find out all right you know they find out it's not a big secret but it's not the first thing they have on their plate it's she as she as a little three-year-old not she as a recovering you know cancer right. patient you know what i mean so stop excellent stop by tori velothry one of the last holdovers from your tenure as head coach of the brockton boxers doing an excellent job in net soccer still a big part of your life yeah. you know i mean soccer is uh, my husband still coaches at the curry college um we're actually on our way up there after this and it is a big part of our life i mean it was for so many years um you know, we have how many soccer balls in our house? <laughs> she, she plays with all these soccer balls. Um, it is, and the Curry family is a big part of our support system as well. Um, they've been tremendous, to say the least. That's an understatement, to see and feel the support that we've received from Curry and the players and the parents. And it's, that alone is, is amazing, gives me chills. But um, yeah, soccer's a big part, and it's weird to look out here, because I'm two years removed. It's weird to say that after so many years of just being here and being here and going through the motions with all these, um, with all these girls. And I mean, Maddie's a junior. She was a freshman for me. Tori's a senior. Oh my, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's the time just goes by so quickly. Um, and now this is the reality of, I really, don't know a lot of these girls. I know the minority of the girls. I don't know the majority anymore. I know the minority of them now, so. But it's, you know, it's great. It's great to be here. Say hello. Hi. Say hi? <laughs> no. So getting ready for tournament time, last game of the regular season here today. 
message of support for the Brockton Lady Boxers and not the best record, give give the message to the Brockton Boxers, pump them up for the tournament. You know what, they just have to do what they can do. They can't worry about um, the opponent, the opponent's record, playing in a um, at the opponent's house. Um, they just have to worry about them. They need to worry about each other. They need to focus on what they do best. They need to focus on supporting each other. And th the rest of the chips are going to fall. When we, we had many times in my tenure that we were the underdog. And that was the message that I tried to tell them is, you got to control the controllables. You can't control the other team. You can control making the plays. You can control winning the 50-50. You can control play to play and not getting your head down. Um, that's what they need to do, you know, especially coming in as a lower seed and going to a higher rank seed. If everything can be blocked and they can focus on the here and now and be in the moment, you know, that might pay dividends for them. That, and they might, they're in there to surprise people. You know what I mean? They're there, they're there to surprise people. And if they can pick somebody off along the way like they did last year to uh, Plymouth South, that's what I love. <laughs> Production assistant Olivia holding the mic. Yeah, she's holding the mic. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Tez, anything we didn't cover? It's been a, a whirlwind couple of years for you. Yeah, it's it's been a whirlwind, and um, you know we're, we we've gone through this for a reason. I finally had the epiphany of that probably last May when we were in the hospital in treatment with her, and I stepped out because I needed a break. I you know I needed a break, so I stepped out into the hallway of Children's, and um, you know I finally had that aha moment of we're here for a reason. You know she is going through this, we are going through this now for a reason. And what that reason is, I don't know, but if it can be a blessing to somebody else, if we can, you know, if her story can touch somebody else or inspire somebody else, um, if we can reach other people, if we can meet other people and, you know, support them, then maybe that's why we're here. Maybe that's why this happened to her. And, you know, we're definitely not gonna raise her to be, you know, a victim and hey, look at me, this is what I, it's gonna be, this is who I am because of what I went through. I'm gonna be stronger because of that. And I hope that's what we are raising her to be. And I know it's changed my mentality. <laughs> I know it's gotten me through a lot, like the marathon. Um, just day to day, um, if she can do it, you know, there's nothing that, that we can't do together, right? <laughs> <laughs> little peanut. So you're running all these marathons. Yep. Yep. Been uh, running all year for Dana Farber to raise money. Um, I made it. It took me only 41 years of my life to actually follow through on a New Year's resolution. But uh, I got two more races to go for uh, the Dana. And like I said, last year, last week was the was the marathon. So obviously that was the big one. But um, you know, like I said, at mile 23, that's what got me through. Look, if she can do it. I just got to get to mile 26.2. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, it's been amazing. It's been um, an amazing year to be able to do that. And, you know, the support that I've received for, for that, not just financially and the generosity of people, but, you know, the support of my family. I mean, they think I'm crazy. Oh, God, you got another one coming up? But it's the least I can do to help, you know, in the big scope of things, if I can help a little and I can be a part of... A, a little part of a big change, you know, then that's that's what it's for. It's for kids like her and so many more that honestly have it worse off. I mean, it puts it in perspective. It could have been worse, which is weird to say, but the things you see when you're inpatient, it could have been worse. And I, you know, she's she's one lucky little girl. We're one lucky family. You always think it, it sucks, but it could never happen to me. Yep. It does, yeah. And then you start going on this roller coaster, and you really find out what you've got. You what really you've got inside what you've got as far as support, and you guys have a ton. Yeah, you really find out what you've got, but you also find out what you've got internally. And you know, it again. It took me until May to kind of have my epiphany of we're here. We're here for a reason. She. This is happening to her sidebar to us. Um, for, and I never want to say oh, it's happening to us, it, for her. But we all went through it in some way. Um, 
our our family and friends went through it with us and um you find out who you are you find out what you're made of you find out how strong you can be in in certain situations and you know right away we thought i i knew you can't break down in front of her i said to my husband i said to myself mm -mm, you gotta hold it in and if you need a break you leave and you have your breakdown without her seeing it because she can't in my opinion she couldn't see that so um of course you have your breakdowns and you have your moments but it wasn't about us it was about her and getting this little almost two-year-old through this um and you do you find out how strong you are you find out um how to ask for help and how to accept help which was hard for both of us to do accept help um and ask for it when people are like what can i do what can i do you find out you just accept it because people just want to help and it's that was an amazing thing to finally uh, truly understand. Uh, right? oh. You're always a part of fundraisers. They're just never for you. You know, you're right. always a part of giving to charities. You're never the recipient of it type of thing, if that makes any sense. And, um, you know, it took us a while to accept that, that people want to do that for us. Like, all right, I don't know. I feel awkward. And they don't feel awkward. We want to help. We want to do something. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're silly. You're silly now. You always make it to at least one, usually a couple Brockton yep. High games throughout the year. Yep. Tell us what Brockton High soccer has meant to you throughout all of your years, not just through the battle. You know what? I mean, I played here for four years back in the, <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> I won't say. I won't say. Um, and, you know, we, we struggled back then. Um, and to come back to come back and, and be, a, be a part of it on a different perspective, be a coach and kind of try to rally the troops in a different way and contribute in a different way. Um, you know, I had a player ask me before, why do, you, why do you care so much or why are you so passionate? I said, because you have no idea what me and my teammates had to do. We struggled and you guys, you guys have a chance to really be special, be put on the map, do something special, do something together. You'll never get this back. And she kind of looked at me like, wow, really? And yeah, that's the reason, to be a part of something. You'll never get high school back. Um, to get these moments back, to get these teammates back, you'll never duplicate a season, no matter how good or bad, and you'll never have that time. And you know, to be able to be a part of it on two different fronts, a player and then a coach, um, for so many years, it's a, huge part of, it's a huge part of my life, one that I'm very proud of one that had ups and downs um but you know like everything you, you you learn from it and it um taught me a lot about how to you know focus uh maintain how to lead how to get over things how to try to improve myself how to intrude how to hopefully improve others help focus others help others achieve and to see a lot of the girls that i've had doing what they're doing now. Some of them are teachers, some of them are coaches, some of them are going to school at the highest level, some of them are running marathons, uh, some of them, it's, you know, it's, it's, that is a proud parent for me. I, I'm, I feel like I'm a proud parent of, of them and it's just a little proud moment to know that yeah. you were a part of these amazing kids' lives and look at what they're doing now, they're thriving. And I get to say, I was a part of your life for three, four years, you know, it's, a, it's truly a blessing for me. Uh, it's an incredible feeling for me to know that I was a part of these young ladies' lives. They allowed me to be a part of their life and they kind of put up with me for three or four years. <laughs> Let's be honest, they put up with me. Um, but they survived and, um, you know, it's, it's great to see them doing so many different things, doing them so well um, and thriving in their own lives now, post high school. Well, about 5.15 to go in the second half. Olivia is already halfway to the door. She wants to yeah. continue running around on the she field. Does. <laughs> we'll let you get back to the game, Coach Tess. Thank you for joining us and thank going you. through the battle and being an inspiration. Thank you for having me up yet again. You're always so so welcoming to me and now to her <laughs> to come up and, and talk. And, um, you know, thank you guys so much for all your support and all your prayers and blessings we we feel them and um you know she's gonna hear about them when she gets older and as she gets older <laughs> she'll go oh mom 
Like, yep, you're you going to hear about me it again. On TV? Oh, yep. Mom, come on. stop. No, I'm going to tell you about the story of Olivia. Let's go. Because <laughs> I still wear my bracelet, Olivia Strong. You know? Where is it? There it is. It's somewhere. Come on, don't make me look like a liar. There, there we go. So that's still on us. And we are. We're Olivia Strong. All right. Still scoreless Thank between so the Spellman Cardinals and the Brockton Hello. Boxers. Yes. Want to say bye? <laughs> say bye-bye. Don't wave. Say bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> Still scoreless between the Cardinals and the Boxers. About four minutes to go in the second half. Brockton's had a couple of opportunities and Spellman has had a couple of opportunities. Good old fashioned goalies duel in this one. Listen, at this point, that's all you can ask for. Spelman's a quality team. They're always a quality team. And um, they would probably like a win more than a tie, like all of us. But uh, this is a good showing for Brockton. This is a good showing. Tori's playing well. You know, she's, she was under pressure, I think, in the beginning, and they couldn't get out of their defensive zone. But in that second half of the first half, they started to put the pressure on. They got a couple corner kicks. They've been putting pressure on that goalie. And now it seems like it's been pretty even. So, you know, that's what you want. You want a good showing going into the tournament. You want that good, strong showing going into the tournament. So it's one of your girls, Tori Viola Lothry, who has been a rock all season, not just today. A couple of spectacular ones today. Yep. All season long, Tori has been excellent. The team starts with a good goaltender. Uh, oh. Yes, it does. And, you know, she she needs to um, be the anchor back there. Um, she needs to control the troops. She needs to be the most communicative, if that's a word. <laughs> um, and she needs to be a leader, not be just because she's a senior, but she's one of the veterans. She's the goalie. She can see the field. She has to be that rock when everyone maybe is down or when everyone is, is getting pooped, she needs to be the one that gets people inspired and she needs to be um, rallying the troops no matter what. So the final moments of a game, still scoreless. Yep. Teams get a little anxious down there trying to get that one goal to break the ice to maybe be a game winner. Yep. What's going through your mind as a coach on the sideline during these last two minutes in a scoreless game? Um, you know, my, my thing is I hope my players don't get too creative and don't get mm. too panicked. You know, you never want players to get too panicked, no matter what the level is, mm. high school, college, professional. Oh. You want them to stay in the moment, and you want them to keep fighting the fight that they've been fighting the whole game that's gotten them to this point, that kept them in a 0-0 zero -zero tie, um, that's put pressure on a good quality um defensive team and you don't want them to get too fancy you don't want them to do things that they aren't capable of doing you want them to do the simple things and do them well um, you know win the 50 50 ball you want them to make the pass you don't want them to just take shot just to take a shot you want them to put quality chances on goal Laura Cardozo is down just inside the Spellman midfield Whistles blow as she gets up and puts a little bit of weight on her left leg. It's Lara Cardozo hobbling to the Brockton sideline. Never want to see injuries. And earlier in the season, Brockton lost their senior captain. Janae Dimanche Silva to a broken collarbone. Thank you again. Always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Always a pleasure to talk to the Tassinaris. Plural this time. 
Under two minutes, we probably get about 30 seconds left in a scoreless game. Between the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals and your Brockton Boxers. Last game of the regular season for the Lady Boxers. Double header action here at Marciano Stadium as the whistles blow and this one ends in a draw. Brockton finishes their regular season three, 13, and two. And Spellman moves on to five, 11, and two. A goaltender's duel here at Marciano Stadium. Game ball to Tori Viola Lothary for that save right there. Coming all the way across the net and making the stop. We end scoreless 0-0 between the two Brockton teams, Cardinal Spellman Cardinals and the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at BCA Sports, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you in the tournament.